Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we'll be doing a review of the third film in the Samurai Trilogy, Duel at Ganryu Island. Before getting started, though, please be sure to smash that like button, light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey. It really does help out a lot. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and have that bell notification on. That way you know every single time a new video or live stream goes live. And for more information, check out my website, ombreviews.com. All right, so this journey has finally ended. This is the third film in the Hiroshi Inagaki uh, series of films known as the Samurai Trilogy. This is called Samurai 3, Duel at Ganryu Island, starring, of course, the amazing uh, Toshiro Mifune. And before getting into some of the issues that I have, which are very similar to the issues that I had with the previous films, let's talk about some of the really good stuff in here. So first off, something that I don't think I've mentioned before is the score. I am a huge fan of the score to this movie. It is very iconic. It carries through all of the movies, and it's very clearly uh, played throughout the films, too, especially when anything epic is happening, whenever Toshiro Mifune's character is going on a journey or he's made a big decision, it's it's starting to play, and it's, it's always really awesome to hear that. So the score to this entire series has been fantastic. Also, talking about the cinematography for the series, including here. Uh, the last movie has also been very solid as well, especially with the use of color. Again, this film back in 1956 using Eastman Color, which I believe last time I checked was a brand or variation of Kodak. And so the colors really do look good and really do pop. I always love, especially in these movies, the costuming. Um, something else that I don't think I mentioned a whole lot. The costuming to these movies has been fantastic when characters are workers in the field, right? They are, they are dirty just like they are supposed to be. If a samurai has been on a long journey, uh, the lower parts of their pants are dirty from the mud of walking, again, just like it should be. And also all of the costuming and coloring, especially of the garb worn by the samurai, worn by the higher elite class, um, all of it has just been very well done. So huge shout out to the costume design, production design, right? everything that's supposed to be there on screen during this time in history should absolutely be there and really does work very well. Now, obviously, when I say that, I'm no expert in this time in history, but just to the eye of a lay person who doesn't know too much about this era of samurai history in Japan, it sure looks right to me. Nothing looks too necessarily modern, um, at least by any means. So, with that being said, and of, of course, as I mentioned previously, Toshiro Mifune always does a great job, and most of the acting in this series has also been great. It's it's really cool, especially in this film, because uh, the um, actor who starred in Ikiru, Akira Kurosawa's Ikiru, is in this movie in a small minor role, so it was actually really nice to be able to see him show up in this film as well. But that is really where the good things about the movie end except for one part of the plot because as far as the plot and story goes I have a lot of criticism but there is one part of the plot and story that is worth talking about and that is of course the very end the actual duel at Ganryu Island which after reading a little bit about it is actually based on a historical event something that I really didn't know much about so of course uh, Miyamoto Musashi is someone who uh, is a, a historical person. So this work, uh, this movie, which is based off of a, a book and a play, right? All of these adaptations, they're all loosely based on this legendary swordsman in Japanese history. And also the guy that he fights on Ganryu Island, who I had mentioned in the last movie as well. He also is someone who is someone he actually fought. So this, this guy, Kajiru, Kajiro is actually the guy who he fought at Ganryu Island, and so that's actually based on a historical event, which I thought was actually kind of cool. That entire fight sequence is fantastic, with the one exception being there's a few moments when they show Toshiro Mifune's character, and he's very clearly on like a green screen fake background, because obviously they were shooting this at sunset, which plays a role in the actual duel itself. And so they were, they kind of had to try and keep the consistency of that. I imagine they only had so much daylight to shoot it. And so they had to have a couple of sequences where he very clearly has a fake background. But other than those few sequences, the duel 
is just so great. It's so beautiful. It is, um, you know, tension building. It, it's not like today where in most movies it's just like wham, bam, right? You're just right into it. No, it's it's about skill. It's about waiting for your opponent's move. It, move. It's right. It's about trying to have the best counter to your opponent's move. And of course, to share Mifune's character, like the you know the hardcore guy that he is decides to, on the way to the island, carve out and make a wooden sword and fights with the wooden sword for the majority of the battle, which I think also added an entirely new level because you have these two great samurai warriors, both of whom went through different paths. You have the character here of Kajiro, who over these years that um, he has met and heard of Toshiro you know, Mifune's uh, Musashi, you know, he's been wanting to fight him for a very long time, but the path that he ended up taking was actually the path of luxury, right? He he was engaging with women the entire time. He was also getting to know the elite class. He actually had just been uh, called to be the teacher of one of these great lords, and so he went through this elite class, and so by the time of the duel, he's got this very fancy robe, his hair is all nice and straight, right, prim and proper, he's, you know, set to marry somebody as well, and so he's taken this path, whereas Toshiro Mifune's character has taken the lower class route. Instead of becoming the teacher, because he's actually offered a similar position, he decides to just go off, right, he's, he's been a ronin uh, for the majority of these movies, and so he just decides to go off and start a farm, like, he goes to this town that's been ravaged by bandits and says, hey, we're gonna, you know, him and his, uh, his protege is just like, we're going to stay here. We're going to till the fields and we're going to live the life of a poor farmer, essentially. So he takes that route and constantly, of course, is pushing away the various women in his life, trying to live a life of isolation, denying earthly pleasures, things like that, taking the much more stoic approach of the samurai warrior. And it's this aspect of women that once again rears its very ugly head into this movie and really makes it difficult to enjoy this film all the way through because of how much time they spend on it and just how cringeworthy the dialogue is. It was so cringeworthy that at one point my wife was was home and was and was watching it along with me as she was trying to uh, take care of and feed uh, baby Thor and I was almost embarrassed because I've been on this this kick of Akira Kurosawa movies which have always been great and fantastic dialogue, everything about it. So I was never really concerned or worried about her seeing something on screen or reading some of the you know the dialogue because it was all fantastic where with this one she came in during one of the scenes where one of the female characters essentially saying i'd rather die i want to die and i'm just like oh no this is just not gonna look <laughs> this is not gonna look good so i kept like looking over to see what i wonder what her reaction to this is gonna be and so it just really is so distracting. I mentioned this in the second movie. There's three women vying for him at some point in the movie. In this one, it's just the main two who are still vying for him. But man, oh man, it really is difficult to watch those sequences and scenes because they just have very poor dialogue. The acting by the women can, for the most part, is good. But there's a couple of moments where it's just over the top. And I again, it could very well be a part of the genre that I'm just unaware of, but I really don't think that's the case simply because coming from the Akira Kurosawa samurai movies, that was never really a major part. You had female characters there. You had female characters who even were had, you know, romantic relationships with, uh, you know, the various characters, but it was always just a piece of the puzzle. It was always just a smaller subplot, whereas with this one, it's like just thrown in your face and it's massive. And then, of course, Toshiro Mifune's character, uh, you know, uh, Musashi, like he's got these two women these two beautiful women, all, you know, one who has been, like, used and abused, yet and yet still, based on just a few moments with him years ago, is following him and trying to find him. There's other poor girl who had waited for him for three years just for him to show up and say, nope, sorry, I'm going to go on my own way. She's been following him, getting sick along the way, and he's still denying her. And at the very end, I, I guess you could say that he accepts her love. He makes some reference to saying, you know, a samurai's wife doesn't weep when he leaves, that kind of thing. So, I, I mean, ah, I just, it really was difficult to get through those scenes. And if they were just, just, you know, a few minutes of screen time, okay, I could let that go. Like, you know, it would be more nitpicking, similar to how I talked about the background changing during the final duel. Like, that's more of a nitpick, right? They were constrained by the time and... You know, obviously by the sun in that instance. But when it comes to this stuff, it's like it's it's 
in movies that are almost two hours long, when you have 20 to 30 minutes of it being taken up by just completely worthless plots and subplots, it can get very tiresome and cumbersome. And so because of that, I really do appreciate the vision that Hiroshi and Nagaki had on these movies. As I said, the actual journey part of it, if this was just focused on the journey to becoming a samurai warrior, obviously the denial of women is a part of this specific samurai's uh, character, but not spending as much time on it, I think that the series could have been a lot better than what it was. And so with all that being said, I'm going to give this film a B-, minus, similar to what I gave the last film. In my opinion, I think the first movie is still the best because it has that origin story in there. The, the, <laughs> the people falling in love with him plot is a lot less than in the other two movies. And even though this one does have the best duel and fight sequence that I've seen on film in a very long time, and it's just a lot of fun to watch. And then the ending, of course, is great too, as uh, Mifune's character is sailing away after having defeated the greatest swordsman that he will probably ever um, come across in his life. I don't know. There was just a lot of great emotions there, but ah, they was way too. It was almost like every movie that decided let's add another ten minutes of this boring female love sick puppy story. <laughs> it just was a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this movie and also the entire Samurai trilogy? Do you have the same gripes that I do, especially when it comes to these love stories? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please be sure to smash that like button, light up that fire button. It really does mean a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my June Patreon and Subscribe Star members Andrew Hoyle, Bifford de Hobbit, Brian P., Dion, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, and rather Teresa Martin is Miss Martin Muses now, Tina Bojan, Tina B., and Washington Madranda. Thank y'all very much for being my supporters on Patreon. And to my subscribe star peeps, Fast Reaction, Nosferatsu Gatsu, Stan Four, John B., Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss slash the new number two, J. Ra the Beer Guru, Nevanon G. Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for being my subscribe star members. And if you want your name shouted out at the every at the end of every video and live stream, please consider joining on Patreon or Subscribe Star. You also get access at other tiers to things like a bi-monthly podcast, bi-monthly, bi-weekly weekly twice a month podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger which is a lot of fun there's also a tier in which you can join me once a month for the chosen of Valhalla live stream where you all get to at that level join me for discussions talk about any projects that you might be working on or just hang out and have a good time it's a lot of fun and also too for many of those levels you also get access to a giveaway section on the discord server where you get access to giveaways of things like 4k movies digital codes and tons of other stuff like that so if any of that sounds interesting to you check out the links in the description and sign up over on patreon and subscribe star you guys are all amazing and beautiful people i hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.